Chris, how are, how are you, know, you and the squad feeling after that first win? Yeah, buoyant. You know, we can only take uh, a lot of positives from a, from a decent performance, but it means nothing if we don't turn up for the main event on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, of course, you know, um, if we want to be successful and, you know, a lot's been talked about the structure of, of the football club going forward and the long-term ambitions, you know, I'm all for that and I think it's really important uh, that the club has, has a structure if we want to be, whether it's sustainable or, or consistent in everything we do, whether it's, you know, academy, whether it's S&C, whether it's video analysis, whether it's recruitment, whether it's... Um, what happens on that green bit on, on a Saturday and a Tuesday night. There has to be a structure to everything. Uh, but there's always that desire to go and win the next game and the short term ambition as ambition as well. Um with its you know, winning the next game and moving on. Everybody talks about it. I was listening to a podcast, you know, um um in the week. And, uh, you know, even the top players are talking about it. You know, the Virgil van Dijk's are talking about on to the next game. And, um, you know, uh, if that's good enough for them, that's certainly good enough for me. But that's always been, from me, um, my approach. Um, I think if there were game, games out there in an hour and a half time, we want to go and win it because that's what you're in it for. You're a competitor um, and you want to go and win games of football. And uh, you want to go and win the next game of football, which is, which is obviously the one in front of us on Saturday. If you were to win at the at the weekend, do you? We've talked in the past about the consistency, the fact that perhaps that's why you were brought in because the team has been inconsistent. Do, if you were to win at the weekend, do you feel as if you're, you're perhaps turning the corner in terms of the consistency, or is that too soon? Yeah, I think it's far too soon. You know. You're judged at the end of the season, aren't you? Uh, you know, ultimately, you reflect on your season. Um, we reflect on our week's work. We reflect on games, but you reflect on really a season by season um, sort of view uh, of everything. So, I think you can, you know, you can only look back at the end of the season regarding that. But in in there, there's periods obviously that that go well and don't go so well. Um, but you know, I think you know consistency in attitude and performance is, is is key. Listen, we might play out of this world football on Saturday afternoon and got not got and don't get the result that we're after. Um, uh, so, what's my feeling going to be like on Saturday afternoon? Some of it is going to be some part of us will be we're on the right track in terms of the way we're playing and wins will come. Um, and another part of me is that we're in it to win games of football. So. Hopefully, we can play well and win, and that's always the ambition of the team. And, and from my point of view, whether we turn the corner from what's happened previously, I think we can reflect on that and look back on that. But really, it is a new way of playing. It's a new, it's a new structure. It's a new, new ideas. Not being critical of what's gone off in the past, but this is obviously how we want to go about it. And uh, and of course, as I've just talked about. You know, there's still always something to play for, um, and there's still something in this season for us, regardless of why I've ultimately been brought in, and we all know the reason why why that why that is. Well, you said that, didn't you? You said your first press conference. You know, there's still a season to be played. We can still achieve. I suppose it's just about getting that message to the players. Yeah, well, they know. <laughs> I think that uh, they know by my attitude towards it. You know, I'm not. You know, I'm not foot off the gas type, and think, well, you know, it's okay. You know, it's I'm not here really for this season, and it's it's about maybe you know, will I be judged next year, or maybe my judge the year after? Um, no, I'm getting judged. We're all getting judged now, because that's what the game is, and that's what we're all we're all about, and that's why we're in it. Um, so, my attitude towards the players is consistent in terms of. You can't turn it on and off, and I can't turn it on and off. I can't, you know, look at a training session and think, well, it's all right because, you know, January will come and we'll try and improve the group, and then, you know, the summer will come and then there'll be a different look to the group again, and then maybe January again there'll be a different look. So, you know, I'm here, of course, as we've talked about for the for the for the future, but you know, 
goes back to being a competitor and, and what's the message that I'm giving and my coaches and staff are giving to those players is that we want that winning mentality straight away now. The other bits we'll learn and grow with, uh, whether it's players coming in, whether it's players that we have here already in the building getting better and bringing that all together as a, as, as a, as a team and as a group. But uh, it's definitely... Uh, and my supporters want to see it. Our supporters want to see a performance on Saturday. You know, they, they're, not, they're not too bothered about what's gone off. They want to see Saturday afternoon, Middlesbrough turn up, put a performance in, run about, compete, play in a manner that is, uh, is, represents their football club, represents me, and get a win. And um, they did it last week. Um, we played well in the two previous games, but didn't get the result. We played well on Saturday and, uh, and, 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 and got a win. Hey, listen, we might not play as well as we've played over the last three games, and we might be one of those fortunate teams that we played in the first two games that has maybe not deserved to get a result and got a result. Uh, we'll take that and learn from it and move on, but I think you know we have to have that you know, consistent attitude towards that. I suppose it, it never gets any easier this weekend. Opponents, one of those teams that not so long ago were in the Premier League and had the money from, from coming back down. Yeah, definitely. What two or three years out out, out of the Premier League? So um, obviously, a new manager in this season. Um, uh, a different sort of challenge for us this uh, uh, this Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, we're a team that really dominates the ball, so um, we have to be mindful of the fact that they're going to have a little bit more of the ball than, than possibly the the opposition have had over the last three games. But not get phased about that. Um, as I just said, you know, it was a team that won the Premier League four or five, six years ago that that had forty percent possession and um, and ended up coming out champions. So, you know, this 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 certain situation, certain games where you might not have the ball as much, but it's all about what happens at the end of it and what happens ultimately in both boxes. And you know, we got both boxes right, apart from the the last thirty seconds of the game, which was a little bit disappointed with because I thought we deserved a clean sheet. The bit in the middle which is important that we talked about, out of possession, in possession, we hopefully can get right and we can be that clinical team that we were on, on Saturday, even though Luke has not made any, any big saves. But the defenders you know, played well, as, as, as well as the, the, the forward players, who, who, the midfield players and the forward players who took the eye because it was a, a, a dominant performance. So looking for an all-round team performance on Saturday and hopefully send the supporters home happy again. Just last one for me. I mean, how are you looking in terms of injuries? Who's available? Yeah, Dale and, and Martin Piero. We'll check on them again uh, today. But they've come through the week unscathed. So, as always, to have two really good players, two technically good players back in the fold is is is, is great for us, and it really strengthens the uh, the group. Um, when I'm looking behind me now and whatever team I'm picking now with those two boys, you know, back in the squad, it's uh, it's a lot stronger feel and a lot stronger look to it than it has been over, over the last couple of weeks. Chris, Cheers, Chris. Thank you. Hey, Chris. Hey. Um, you've had you know, this free week uh, now. And do you feel like you've kind of took everything from it that you wanted to? Have you learned much from it? To well, we've we've put in what we've had to do. We've had a positive week from the players in terms of the attitude, in terms of the, the work rate, uh, what we tried to get out of it. There's all different things, you know, game-related stuff, topping up on the conditioning po point of view, looking towards the game on, 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 on Saturday, which, you know, usually is later on in the week, yesterday and today. Um, and uh, getting everybody in the back, back on the grass and um, and just, you know, Dropping those messages in again that you know we played well on Saturday, but it doesn't mean we're guaranteed a, a performance on Saturday. We've got to go again. We've got to show all the qualities that we showed at Huddersfield um, because you know Swansea are a good side. They've got some really good technical players. They move the ball about the pitch really well. They keep possession of it, um, but that doesn't always guarantee the results as as uh, as seen in their results. And uh, every way, everybody has a different way of playing, and it's important that we. We dominate uh, and uh, and we impose ourselves on them and, and hopefully off the back of a good week and uh, delighted that both of the boys have come through. Um, more work into the other players as well. So um, and got a good feeling about the, the group. You know that 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 they're enjoying the work. I know you spoke to Tav yesterday, um, so um, you'll you'll have an insight in terms of what he's most probably talked about. Um, but uh, you know. 
we're getting a good feeling about it. It's you know I've got a good feeling about the football club. Full stop. Absolutely, and uh, hopefully the players have got a good feeling about how they're going. But ultimately, it's uh, it's on to Saturday and uh, and showing showing the qualities that they've they've shown over the last couple of weeks and taking them into that game. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Martin coming back into training there. I know before you come, you said you'd done your research on the squad and everything. But uh, I mean, how much did you know about Martin, and how much have you kind of learned from seeing him up close and personal? Well, I've I've only worked with him for two days, really. Um, three days, Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. So it's the only time I'm, I've had a chat. You know, obviously he's, it's, a, it's a difficult one for, for, for Martin coming into a, a, a new country, not speaking the language, but I've got to say how, how good Leo's been around the place. You know, it's somebody I've really taken to. He's so passionate about the football club. It's, it's great. He brings so much enthusiasm. And obviously he's got a part to play. Martin's learning English. And learning the language, but that isn't going to happen overnight. And uh, and Leo's been important to that. So uh, we've had you know, two or three discussions with Martin, and how we want to play, and, and how we're seeing him, seeing him playing. But it's up to him as well to get into the side. You know, there's no there's no shoe ins just because he comes with a with a tag and a reputation. I've got to say, I think the midfield three have been outstanding. You know, House and Crooks and, uh, and 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 Tav. So he's a midfield player, so he's got to fight his way in. But what it does give us is, is competition for places, and I think all those midfield players know, with Martin back in the in, in, in the group, that you know they need to keep their standards high, which is which is important. You know, Neil Taylor's come in, and I think Mark Bowler's been excellent. So what part of that? Not being too critical about Mark is the pressure and the presence of of, of a Neil Taylor about in terms of his attitude, in terms of what he's done, in terms of the pressure that he's putting on. Uh, Mark to, to, to play well and I need that that's what I'm after all over the pitch so I've got you know try to get that uh, and when I get that then uh, then obviously we'll be looking in a better shape Yeah and I'm sure it's similar at the, at the back as well with Gil coming back into the fold obviously a quality defender but you know he's going to have to work his way back I've, not, I've known yeah I've known Dale uh, 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 and I know about Dale for a long long time you know watched him uh, over the last sort of four or five years in, in the division and uh you know how he burst onto the scene and and uh, and him being so impressed in, in in his qualities and he's a Middlesbrough boy type of player as well. You know, aggressive but wants to play as well. Which uh, you know to have 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 Dell back in the group is is huge. I've got to say the big man's going to take some shifting at the moment because I think he's been outstanding. But um, yet again, Dell's got a, a fight on his hands. So no matter wh- who you are, what your reputation is, what you've done. It has to be difficult to get back into that side, and uh, and I'm sure Sol will make it that way, or, or or whatever position that Dale can play. You know, he can play right of a three, he can play left of a three as well. So yet yeah, again, we've got an, another really good player back uh, back fit and healthy. Yeah, and, and I know um, just on the wood defender, Nathan Wood obviously isn't available to play until January, but I imagine with coming back um, and and into training. You know, he's been very eager to impress. What, how much have you... Yes, I'm not going to go over top on, on Nathan Wood. A lot's been talked about Nathan. He's still a young boy. Um, and he's a lot of learning to to uh, uh, to, to go into to Nathan. He's got obvious, obvious qualities, but I ain't going to talk about Nathan too much, if I'm honest about it. You know, he's, he's had an unsuccessful loan <clears throat> and he's got to get himself going. As much as the work that we put into him, he's got to get himself going and uh, and show he's the player that everybody thinks he is. Um, and that will only come um, with you know consistency on the training ground. And if an opportunity comes in January, um, to uh, to take his chance, and it's over to him. I always think there's you know there's two parts of it, um, and um, and he's he's the one um, that really dictates where his career goes and uh, and what he does with his future. Yeah. Just uh, sorry, it's not just lastly for me. Uh, you mentioned the uh, consistency and the structure uh, throughout the the club uh, and the under twenty threes as well. And uh, just watching the highlights of the under twenty three game the, the other night, it looked like you know there were signs of them kind of setting up a bit like you would want the first team to set up uh, free kick structures like you would normally set up free kicks. Are they using all our free kicks? Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, like, is that something that you you know you like and to have that kind of set thing throughout the whole club? Uh, we're after competitive players that match match the, the the sort of DNA of the football club, you know. And I think it's always been the case, and I've talked about it, you know, in terms of going back when I first came across or was introduced to to senior football and 
and the Middlesbrough teams and the miserable players that I, I've played against right throughout my career, you know, personally, and the teams that I've always been up against, it, that you know, they're aggressive, they're competitive, but they play, they're technical, technical players. And it's always been the case from the mid-80s and the young boys that we talk about, the Pallisters and the Mowbrays, um, and, um, and the other players that have come through, the Ripley's, so... Um, you know, we want to produce those type of players as well because it's no good spending two and a half, three million pounds on a, on, a, on a Cat One Academy if we're not producing players. But so, yeah, my focus has been obviously on the first team, but I take a great interest in young players and, and the academy. We've got some outstanding young coaches in there. Um, you know, I know, I know, uh, I know of them. Uh, I know what their qualities are. And um, and I think that they'll be quite happy that they've got uh, a bit of structure as well because it's been quite. Sometimes it's quite difficult for academy managers and and lids and and the coaches as well when when a style goes from one to the other. Now hopefully, if we keep winning a few games and and uh, are consistent with uh, results, then then they'll have a structure that represents the football club and what I've talked about. Yeah. Cheers. Just going back to when you were talking about defenders. Centre halves, Chris. I mean, you know, when you were at Sheffield United, a lot was kind of written and talked about of, of the way that you introduced tactical tweaks, the way your centre halves played. When you've got someone like Deal who's coming back on the training ground, do you think that you're kind of asking him to do new things and 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 changing the, you know, wanting him to do very specific things, or is that a bit overblown? Do you think too much was made of that when you were at Bramall Lane? Yeah, listen, it's all different ways of playing. There's all different tweaks, and obviously, it got picked up, picked on. Yeah picked up which you know that that happens but as I've just said we want technically good players that can come out with the ball and if we're talking about dominating possession um, in an effective way you know I, I, you know I, I don't want to see my centre halves passing it to each other and having 800 900 passes if there's not anything at the end of the pitch top of the pitch and I'm sure if I was a centre forward and the centre centre half's just passing it to each other, I'm gonna get the arse ache yeah. because we're gonna because we want to be an effective football team. Yeah. We want different ways of playing, but if we want to dominate possession, you have to have technically good footballers. Martin's a technically good footballer. Dale's a technically good footballer. Majority of footballers should be, yeah. but you know, should be able to handle the ball. But some handle it more than more than others, and some teams play in a different way. We just want to be, uh, you know, an effective team. Um, and, and Dale's got all the qualities. Can Dale play at the top of this division? Without a shadow of a doubt. Can he play in the top division? Yeah. Um, but he's, we, you know, this. we'll all feel the same about that. We'll all feel that we, I can manage at the top of this division. I can manage in the next division. I want that to be the ambition of all the players as well, um, including Dale, including Martin, including Tav including people that haven't maybe been at the top of the division that, that can handle it. You know, your crookses and, mm -hmm. and and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's all good or all right talking about it. We've got to go and produce the goods and and walk the walk. And, um, and that's, uh, that's uh, got to be an ambition for us and uh, one that I, I believe they can do, but, you know, it's, it's, it's early days. And just to talk about one more player, Isaiah Jones, who kind of pretty much came from nowhere in pre-season, really, you know, has had a breakthrough season, um, has also played already in a lot of different positions. I mean, A, where do you feel he's at in terms of his career development? And B, where do you see him as, as, at his best? Well, obviously we don't play with wingers. You know, we <laughs> there's times where we played 3-4-3 three, three and forwards. But I think you don't see straight line wingers no more. Yeah. You know, you see players rolling in off the line. You know, if you if it's a four three, if it's a four three three or a three four three, they're playing in the pitch and they're playing out the pitch as well. Obviously, Jonas played wing back, right wing back for us, and uh, I thought he had his best game on, uh, on 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 Saturday. He's an obvious threat going forward. I think you have to, we all have to cut him a little bit of slack because, you know, for the first time in his career, he's 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 been playing in a position that's pretty new to him. Yeah. Um, and pretty unique in terms of a wing back position. Qualities going forward, yeah. End product, good to see on Saturday. Pace to get forward, pace to recover. But you know you've got to have a lot of attributes as well to play those those positions at uh, that position. So you know I, I look at possibly you know the best at playing it in uh, I, I, in the country, Rhys James, player that we've you know we you know, I've tried to get in 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 the past. Um, 
in Chelsea's first team now and good going forward, uh, you know, end product, pace, good decisions at the top of the pitch, but can defend as well. So, you know, there's a lot of learning to go into Isaiah, but, you know, he's learning on the job and he's he's a positive boy, he's a likeable boy and uh, he has to have that thirst for information and, uh, and a willingness to learn as well. Yeah. And if he does that, then then he becomes another asset for the football club and he, another good young player that, that can be part of a group going forward. Because it's interesting that, you know, you've mentioned James there, clearly Trent and Liverpool, you know, those type of players, Cancelo at Man City, have, have arguably come the, the most creative players. I said this about 20 years, that fullbacks are decent. <laughs> <laughs> All right? They're decent and they should get more recognition and possibly a couple more quid in the pay packet. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, I retired, and then all of a sudden, fullbacks became a bit of a vogue, yeah, yeah. An, an important yeah. part. So yeah, I said I said it for about 10, 15 years in my career that they, we are quite important yeah. as fullbacks. Yeah. But yeah. it was always yeah. centre forwards and central midfield players. <laughs> I think every player is important, but yeah. you certainly, you know, the quality that you've seen in the Premier League, for, you know, from 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 left wing back, from right wing back, from left back, Andy Robertson to you know to right back to Trent. You know they've got so many attributes and they dominate the ball and the, the, the fabulous footballers, and um, and you know that's what we're trying to we, you know we're trying to, you know we're we're, we're trying to produce modern footballers as well. You know if we want to be where we want to be, we've got to produce modern footballers that you know can play in a different way, um, that can defend one versus one. Um, that can defend against pace and movement and uh, and skill, but obviously off the back of that can go forward and set attacks up and dictate the the, the flow of the game and um, and at the end at the top part of the pitch, not just get get there and play some great football to get there and all of a sudden the cross goes behind the goal that can pick people out like Jonah did on Saturday to great effect and and Mark's got those qualities on the other side so producing modern modern day footballers for us is is obviously key and very very important. And, and just last of all, kind of to go back where we started with Chris, really, that, you know, it felt like a big moment on Saturday, winning, first win, packed away end, you know, great scenes at the final whistle and that, but it, it would still mean a lot to get that first home win, wouldn't it, and be walking off the pitch with, with the Riverside fans happy and singing. It's, what, yeah, it's what we're gonna, we, we need to create, you know. Uh, I'm not going to ask for their support, it's up to us to earn it, 100%, and uh, we earned the support of... The, uh, the 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 supporters on, on on Saturday afternoon because of the manner that we played um, and uh, for me they have an enthusiasm for this club to do well whether they're home and away they I, I I've got a feeling um, and you're gonna have to correct me if I haven't but I think they're coming to the game looking forward to the game and um, and and expecting a decent performance and expecting a Middlesbrough performance. And that's what we've got to produce. And there's going to be days where we don't, but it won't for the, be for the one of trying and people putting the foot in and running around. There's going to be days where you know there's misplaced passes or there's, there's there's mistakes. But you know if we if we go about it the right way and the, the way that we the, I see is going about it, then I'm sure there's a, a huge enthusiasm um, to to you know to to, to shake us up and uh, and get us going again and get us moving forward because it's been a long time, hasn't it? Let's be right about it. It's been it's quite it's yeah. been quite inconsistent, and uh, we've got a, the aim for me and the staff and, and the players is to bring bring that consistency back, and then we have more days like we did at Huddersfield, and hopefully, you know, a first win on Saturday, but still respecting and understanding that we've got to, we've got to play well in this in this really tough division.